Man, you know what? Every time I go to that stinking arena, I swear I smell funny. Let's see this crowd in Daytona Beach. Wait, I'm in Daytona Beach. Oh, wait, I'm live. Hello, and welcome again. Here, I just want to fill it with the volume. I had to update my computer. I hate updating my computer. So that means I have to reset all the settings I like. Yes, my name is Hobo Tom. The only reason I do shows on Saturday, well, there's two reasons. One, there was either an Impact, Ring of Honor, or New Japan pay-per-view. Uh -uh. Or, my crowd's great pleasure, it's an NXT live show here in Daytona Beach. It's not the Daytona Bum Fight League Wrestling, folks. This is the almost big leagues in NXT Wrestling. I'm sorry if I'm drinking a little bit. I, I'm a hobo. I walked. And it's like 75 outside. It's warm. Then the February. I'm used to snow in February. Darn it. So I apologize for that. I have to somewhat get my drink on and hydrate at the same time. Again, folks, if you're going to do this, with a yummy, tasty adult beverage, do not drive, be like Hobo Tom himself, and walk it out. So let's talk about some NXT. I'm going to put in the thumbnails. Probably for this show and some other show I'm going to do. I figure out what. I got more selfies. Boy, do I take it. Do I suck at taking selfies? So let's see here. A couple notes about NXT. You know what? Boo, Ticketmaster. I'm never getting my tickets through Ticketmaster again, mainly because they charge me about $15 for my general admission seats, whereas I could have paid $11 at the venue itself, and I would have saved 3 bucks. Boo, Ticketmaster. Never, ever going through Ticketmaster. Period. In fact, I might not go through the network, especially if they go through Ticketmaster. NXT and WWE used to be really good. This will be my rant and rave for the night because there's nothing else to really rant and rave about besides the end, but we'll get to that. NXT used to offer tickets really at face value. If they said it was $10 for general admission, it was, it was $10.65. I understand the tax part. But since they've really, since NXT has really partnered up with Ticketmaster, their prices have gone through the roof, unlike places like Go Wrestling, which I might catch next month. I'm not too sure. I know there are two shows coming for NXT next month. I think it's going to be Sanford and Jacksonville. Depending on my work schedule, we'll see what happens with that. And depending on other stuff. Because I do want to take my one friend to NXT because he saw what it's like for the big show. I'm not sure what it's like at the mic at the next level under. And then definitely want to take her to an indie show. So my only real rant and rave about this, boo Ticketmaster. Well, let's get right into this. The only other sad thing is that there was no Amber Nova. I have my little card that has her face on it. I want to get a sign. But instead. Again, the, again, one of the best things that NXT does is that they do have their meet and greet. And it's neat because as long as you get in line quick enough. And they sped up the time that they allow people in. Now it's 6.30. I need to remember that. Because I got there at 6.45-ish. I had to wait outside. And I almost didn't get a chance to get my selfie taken with Chelsea Green and MJ Jackson. And this time, MJ Jackson was in ring attire. Too bad she didn't wrestle. Chelsea Green did. And Punishman Martinez was there. He's a big, tall dude. Again, it was, it was 
That was good. Um, again, as they announce things, I think they were kind of doing the cold intro. They do the two intros. They do a cold intro and then a hot intro. Hot, the cold intro, um, it was Mia Yim, Alistair Black was there. Undisputed Air was there. And Velveteen Dream was there. So again, it was good. So again, the intro, kind of your basic intro. Not bad as things go. And this leads to the first match of the evening. And let's see here. Okay, so this was... Oh, that's right. It was um, my son, something. I do apologize. I didn't, I, sometimes I can't get it all. The, the, um, the ring announcer goes way too fast, and if it's a new name. So, Son versus Riddick Moss. And sometimes it's just hard for me to read, to read my own scribble. Because I'm trying to videotape this, as well as write down, take down notes. This was actually pretty good. This was a match of, of, of two kind of big men. I'm a son, definitely looking the more athletic of the two. And Masan also knows how to play up to the crowd. Very good skills he's learning here in NXT. Riddick Moss is definitely the heel. He does the heel tactics. Riddick Moss is also the strong, the strong, the stronger of the two men. And he he also has that strong, more brawlerish, more heelish moveset. It makes sense. It's good character development by Rick Moss. The crowd is really hot because the Daytona crowd can be weird at some times. In my Daytona Beach Bum Fight League wrestling game, I tell you what, I made that crowd to a T. <laughs> because you have people with wrestling shirts, people in evening dresses, and women who look like strippers coming to this match. And everything in between. 
So you'll just see people wearing a t-shirt. Some people be wearing sweatshirts. And the strippers wearing open shirt clothing. Yeah. So again, a little bit of everyone there. So I did a really good job in getting the demographic because I think the other two options I had were all people in wrestling t-shirts. Not here in Daytona Beach. Again, you have a high class, the middle class, and the low class, a.k.a. strippers and hookers and cheap prostitutes. So again, the crowd was pretty hot. Moss is getting good at his trash talking. I do like that. And with this, just like every other smarky crowd, if you're good in the ring, you have good talking skills, you have good in-ring ability, your moveset's good, you're doing what, you're, what we at least think you should be doing. The crowd is weird because at house shows, the crowd will appreciate that. And for a while, they were actually cheering for Riddick Moss. Again, they're appreciating all the work he's doing. When he does heel stuff, he gets booed. When he does good stuff, he gets cheered. Again, this was actually a really fun match. Good back and forth. There were some kind of botchy things. It's always hard to figure out. Only because it was so warm outside. I don't know if the wrestlers get too sweaty. I know in an interview, I think that Stone Cold Steve Austin did, I want to say, on the Busted Open podcast. The reason why he wore wrist tape, I think it wasn't really to support his wrist. It was just to get a grip. Because he would be so, so hot and sweaty. Some wrestlers, Joey Ryan, put on way too much body oil. So, again, they kind of get that, that wrist tape for a grip. It makes sense. Some wrestlers, I mean, they get it like up to the elbows, not like almost up to here. Where you just kind of really need it in this particular area. Some wrestlers do use it for so that they don't break their wrist. Some wrestlers use it just so the opponent can get a good grip. Either way, it makes sense. Uh, there's only kind of one. It was semi semi botched at the end. But overall, it wasn't too bad. Again, Riddick Moss won. And I'll, I'll get into that in, that in a little bit. But this was a good, fun opening match. Nothing wrong with it. A cheeseburger match.
That was fun. The second match of the evening. Chelsea Green, formerly of Impact Wrestling fame, is now in NXT. What's she doing in NXT? Well, wait, that's probably good. And she took on Jessie, the hometown girl. By the way, Jesse's definitely taking on that Bailey persona. Um, you definitely know who the heel is, who the face is. Always good in XC to see, see character development early. So you, at least you have an idea about who to cheer, who to boo. Um, Jesse, I'll tell you what, I remember when Jesse first started wrestling. I think it was in Daytona Beach. What was it on Dade City? One of the two. I want to say it was Daytona Beach, though. You can go back in my video archive. Again, look up Hubble and Girlfriend on YouTube, and I have a, actually I have over 200 videos now. And on Monday, a special video is being posted. I'll get to that. Monday. So, but Jessie's, oh, she's grown a lot. She, her rest, wrestling style has matured a lot. Just everything about her really went through the roof. Again, she's just, she has a good look about her. She ha I'll, I'll quantify that. She has a good NXT look about her. I don't know if they could use another Bailey lookalike, though. And Green is definitely, she knows how to be the heel wrestler. Again, Jessie's just so smooth looking now. She's really good. And I'll tell you what, this was a quick match. Whether it plays to Jesse's advantage or Chelsea Green's advantage, either one, it's really hard to tell. It was a semi quick match. It was a good match. I mean, you can have a good fast pace, and it was fast paced and action filled. Very few wrestles. Wrestles were done with purpose. 
I like when wrestles are done with purpose. So this match, even though Chelsea Green did go over, this is a good solid cheeseburger match. And then we go to our third match of the night. And this was Raquel Singh. I think I said his name. Versus Willis William. And I forget if I said his name. Again, sometimes it gets really weird to hear, and I don't feel like doing research about stuff. Um, this was pretty good. I mean, I just don't know if there's one. It could be one of three things. One, there's more than one Singh brother in the WWE. This has definitely not the run to the litter. Two, did NXT poach from the Desi Hit Squad? Hmm. Or three, is Singh just a very common indie name? I don't know. I mean, Singh could be like Smith, like the American Smith. So, it's hard to say. And this was a pretty good power versus power match.
And again, once you have any foreigner involved, unless you're a face foreigner, you're always going to get USA chance. Again, it was a fun match, though. Um, a good back and forth. Singh would not let Williams, who's famous, sit. He did get it at the end in front of the crowd. It was good. Uh, really power match. A lot of power moves. Trust me, it wasn't bad. This was... The thing about this whole entire card, this whole entire event, it was good. Nothing to really complain about. I mean, Williams had that flying spinning kick off the ropes. Amazing looking. And I'll tell you what, Williams went over. And again, it was hard to get this anything but a cheeseburger rating. Again, this whole card was good, with the exception of this next match. Woo! Woo! And the next match of the evening. Oh no, wait, not this match. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, folks. I got a little too excited over there. Yeah, it was premature excitement, folks. I'm sorry about that. We had an Eric Bugenhaven promo. Which just made me absolutely laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, the air metal devil. Yeah. Oh my god! One, he plays the crowd. He is amazing. <laughs> I just hope he doesn't wear himself out. I have to make a gif of this eventually. In between the air guitar and the air drum, amazing. Really short promo, though. Um, he <laughs> Again, he does the crowd giveaway. He gives away his drumsticks. I got to like that. He looks like a late 80s, early 90s caricature of a professor. Again, I'm old. 
I like that too. And then we had a repackaged Baba Tunde come out. I'm not too sure I like this Bobby Tunde though. And he took on Umberto Del Rio. And I guess the WWE owns the Del Rio tag, so they can put that on anyone. Because remember, at one time, there was Alberto Del Rio, whose name should not really be mentioned ever again. But so it was uh, Bobby Tunde versus Umberto Del Rio, a big, big strong guy versus a quicker, more agile guy. Umberto's smart. He knows how to use his speed, and he uses his speed to his advantage anytime he can even if it's just to get out of the way of a much bigger, stronger opponent. Again, some of the moves Baba, Baba Tunde did. Ooh, that power slam had some stank to it. And so did that chop. Ooh, I like those chops with some stank on it. That's good stuff. Um, again, there was some good, some good speed sequence, some good strength sequences. I mean, just got. Looks, it was really good though. Um, Umberto did get tossed out of the ring a couple times. Uh, one time he just beat the ten count, which is really good. I mean.
this was a fun match. And it was good. It was high flying. There was excitement, back and forth action. Woo! It was good. Unfortunately, though, Bob Tunde is a little too strong for the much smaller 205 weight limit on Berto Del Rio. But overall, Bob Tunde did go over a cheeseburger match. Normally by this time in the crowd, normally by this time I'm like, there's a ham sandwich match somewhere. Disgusting. And how minor a complaint what that is that so many heels are going over. I just turned my cell phone off. I was texting a friend or so I'll get to that, that shortly. I need to hydrate though. Ah, uh, that was good. And then oh my gosh! This was the match of the night. I know why. I, I understand why they did the one match as the main event. I'll get to that later. But this, folks. Oh my gosh. I almost don't feel like talking and just let all the videos I took of it play. Because security was really lax. Which is what I like. It means more videos for you guys. More videos is better ratings for me. But this match was amazing. We had Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch and Punch Punishment Martinez versus Wait for it. Wait for it. Un, 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 undisputed era for life, or almost. I just have to re remember that it's a mirror image. Minus Adam Cole, baby. Boom! This match was amazing. I don't even care that Adam Cole wasn't there, even though Adam Cole, I think, is from Panama City, Florida.
So that's about six hours to about five, six hours to Daytona Beach. Not bad. But his buddies, Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish were here. And by the way, Kyle O'Reilly, you need to go to Daytona Beach proper. Or if you want to go to a higher class beach where women have cuter bikinis, you want to go up to Ormond Beach, my man Kyle O'Reilly, you have to get yourself some sun. That's all I'll say. If that's the only issue I have with this, this match, <laughs> you, there's only one rating I can give this match then. This was amazing. It was really good to see Bobby Fish in the ring again. He's not had good luck in Daytona Beach. Unless he just got busted open. It's crazy. So, but the wrestling, so good. Oni Lorcan is a beast. All those variations of the back body drop Roderick Strong can do is amazing. Fish is Bobby Fish. Oh, so good. I should have got a Bobby Fish shirt. And it's the one thing I do regret not getting when I saw him at WCPW was a Bobby Fish shirt. It looked really good. It had a whole explanation of Infamous and Bobby Fish on the back. Really good shirt. I don't think it's up anymore at Pro Wrestling Tees. I know they do have a wrestle meeting. To figure that out. But 
Only Lorcan's a beast. They are all such good technical wrestlers. The WWE needs to sit down the pad and pen and take notes on how to conduct a six-man match just based on this match alone. It was awesome stuff. Fish <laughs> yells at some poor kid for booing words out of coal. Oh, they're so good. I love it. Oh, Fish is such a heel. He deserves everything. Deserves every accolade. There's good stuff all around. There's outside flying stuff. I mean, when the Undisputed Era, when one of them was somewhat isolated on the outside, all three of them, just like a team would do, teamwork for a six-man tag match? Who would have thunk that? Boom. Goes to dynamite. Now I'm done. I mean, just amazing tag team action throughout the match. And if I didn't hit my beats right, trust me, I got plenty of videos from this match. Security was really lax. Or I had, or I sat in the right spot. Roderick Strong. So good. Jeez. I mean, the Undisputed Era know how to double team. Only Lorcan and Danny Burch know how to double team. Even Punishment Martinez was getting in on the stuff. This was just pure amazing stuff. And when I say it's freaking amazing, you know that this match is only one possible rating for this match. That is Whoa, Magnifique the Filet Mignon. That was amazing. And with that, take a little intermission. Tranquilo for a little bit, which is always good. The crowd needs to kind of catch his wrestling. Wow. And again, you can talk to wrestling fans in the back. 
a very simple conversation on which matches us. Now that the intermission will be next, probably three more ma- three or four more matches, depending on how they are. Just talk about oh that match was amazing. So like, yeah, why can't they do it on TV? Oh well, I haven't caught up. Ring of Honor does this. Uh, have you heard about AEW? Are any of these people going to go to AEW? Uh, probably not. They probably have some kind of developmental deal. One time, a, a couple of women kind of move on. Oh, really? Oh, who, do you, who do you think? Oh, well, Candice LeRae should definitely go. They're not doing anything with her. Yeah, Candice LeRae hasn't been around in a while. It's like, Alistair Black's really here? It's like, man, he's just been on TV. He must not be getting called up. Just talking with true wrestling fans, those who enjoy it. And then we talked about football and other stuff. And it was fun. Talk about some basketball. Intermission's good. you got to stretch your legs. It was fun, though. Again, for the most part, and again, I saw that one wrestling fan. Generally, if you see the one wrestling fan, it's safe because that means you're not that one wrestling fan. So that's pretty good. So next we have the sixth match. We have Velveteen Dream versus Luke. Menazes. 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 know how he managed to get this title shot. And I'll tell you what, though. 
It was a good match, though. The Velveteen Stream has that slap. Woo! I mean, he knows how to work the crowd. But he just wasn't booked that strong. I mean, Luke put on a really good match. And I don't know if it's because it's a live show. But, oh yeah, someone's vaping too. Boo! Only because I can see, like, Puff of Smoke in the one video that I have. But, boo! I don't want to see smoke. They got kicked out. Oh yeah, and the stagehand set up that chair. That was lame. But I'll tell you what, this match was really good. It was Well, it wasn't really good. It was good, though. I mean, Luke got in more offense than I thought someone could who's a no-namer. And he had a really good show on himself. I mean, he's really grown and developing as Luke Menendez. And I know I butchered his last, even though it's on his trunks. So I can't get it right. Um, himself, Velveteen Dream. How long is he going to hold the title if he has to push himself to go against jobbers like this? I mean, he is, well, he's not Johnny, Johnny Takeover yet, but on TV and pay-per-views, he has squash matches. Not on live shows, folks. Are live house shows his kryptonite? Indeed. We shall find out. My only qualm with this match, even though it was really good, it got kind of weird at the end. Why'd Luke bring out a billy club? An old-fashioned... <laughs> this was an old-fashioned... Wooden, wood colored billy club that a Bobby from that a constable of England would carry around. Kind of swing around just like a Keystone cop. Do I have something I can swing around? Oh, there we go. I have a prop. You would just kind of swing around this like little, little billy club here. Let's see if I can get it better on this side. Yep, I have a foreign weapon and I am bringing it to the ring. MLT is using it. And oh, this. You didn't see anything, Mrs. Mrs. Referee. And then the Velveteen picked it up. Dream picked it up. I don't want to see the Velveteen Dream do a heel move. No. So he didn't need it. Why they used it? I guess it's part of Luke's gimmick. Although if he's gonna he has a billy club, he has to either come out as a Keystone Cup outfit or a London Bobby. I think that's what they're called over in England. 
So, but Velveteen Dream Force 1, and again, minus that one for an object spot. I guess it, I would have been more impressed if he, if he would have done this. <laughs> Pulled it from his trunks instead. That's the only way any sneaky wrestler. You should watch old 80s wrestling. You should watch Ric Flair. Get to. <laughs> and grab brass knuckles from like the front part of his trunks. So again, he has to learn a little bit. But again, this was overall a fun cheeseburger match. I have minor quibbles, and really to get a cheeseburger rating, if I have minor quibbles like that, it doesn't take away from the match. So that's good. And the next match is six woman tag match. You have Z Zhang Li, Maya Kim, and Bianca Belair. I thought Bianca Belair was a heel. I guess not. Versus Shayna Baszler, Yasmine or Jasmine Duke. And Marina Sh Shapiro.
I honestly forget how to pronounce your name. It's either Shapiro. Sounds like that OJ lawyer person. And Sharapova, which is a tennis player. So I will say Shapira. At least that way I can tell the difference. Um, this was really good. It was a good match. Um, being with Bianca Belair. Um, actually, Zhang Li Li. Zhang Li starts the match. Um, Shannon Baser starts the match. Bianca Belair says, eh, eh, I want her. Once Shannon Baser says, she's like, eh, eh. Tagged in. I think Jasmine Dukes is the tall, skinny one. Maria Sharpie is the one with the weird mask. We can tell who you are underneath the mask. You look like a raccoon, lady. So it was okay. Um, nothing really spectacular. Jasmine Duke, Marina Shapiro have a lot to learn still. And if it's the one I'm thinking of, Jasmine Duke's tight are way too tight. They're very geeky looking. Pretty good. Mia Yim can wrestle, though. I'll tell you that much. Um, there was the whole thing where for a while they were going after her ankle. She sold it for a while. Stopped selling. Well, actually, she got out of the ring for a while. So I guess it was it was okay. She was still doing some some pretty good moves. She wasn't selling as much of that ankle.
And oh, by the way, this one video set's going to feature a lot of Jasmine Stukes, but I'll get that out of the way. Disclaimer. Again, those tights were way too tight. I like the outfits somewhat. The two of them are kind of like wearing army ammo wear. It works for them. If it's who I'm thinking of, Yasmin Duke, she's skinny. Man, she has long, skinny legs. And if she was in jeans, she'd have no butt. I guess if you're wearing cheeky underwear, though, you have a butt. I'll pull those out another day. Once I got my ex-girlfriend cheeky underwear, I did not like them. I don't know why. I think that was her part of her sexy Christmas gift. Thankfully, I never had to get another sexy Christmas gift ever again. See, women, you don't realize that guys like to get their women sexy things for Christmas. And I think that was the gift that I gave her Christmas Day before the family showed up. And again, that was a whole other thing. And there are probably reasons why we broke up. That may be one of them. But again, they can all wrestle. I mean, Zhang Lee can wrestle. Bianca Belair can definitely wrestle. Unless someone grabs a hold of her hair. Shayna Baszler. It was pretty good, though. Shayna's very cool and calculating. I like this, though. And they isolate Mia Yim for a long time. Um, you, have, you have the ESC chance. It was pretty good, though. There was some springboard backflip salt that she did that was amazing looking. Um, one thing. I guess it's good. In the fact that Dukes and Shapiro, they're not the best in the ring. They're good with technical striking. You get them to work over body, they're good. Other than that, they're just your basic indie star wrestler. So I guess I can understand why they had them fight the other two, Bianca Belair and Mia Yim, in the backstage area. They went back there. They were hungry. They had a hot dog. Maybe one of them had to take a bath. From I don't know. Eventually, Mia Yim, Bianca Belair, Jasmine Duke, and Maria Shapira disappeared to the back. I mean, just poor Zhang Li and Shayna Baszler in the ring. And, again, Zhang Li had to tap out. Not bad. I understand it. It was a good match overall. Nowhere near the quality of this of the six man tag match we saw. This was again though a good cheeseburger match. And this leads us to the main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner. We have Donovan Jajakovic and his opponent, 
Just coming in from Louisiana, Alistar. things that made this match so amazing with its setup. One, Donovan Dijakovic. I'm just going to call him Donovan. I don't want to go through the whole Di 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 Dijakovic. I, I'm not even sure if that's right. Again, he's a big dude. And again, you can feast your eyes. If I had his body, you know what? I would tell people to feast your eyes on this, too. I'd probably go to work in my wrestling trunks, too. Or just jeans. Jeans and just shirtless. Probably do a lot more business that way. If I went jeans and shirtless, I'd pr probably scare customers. The cops would show up. I'd probably be fired. Not that jacket. And he knows how to get heel heat. He knows how to talk up the crowd. And so does Alistair Black.
By this match, Akira was like, I'm going to go get a hot dog and soda. Probably going to treat myself to a cold, frosty beer, too. So, there was no security. So, roll video! This was really good. I mean, Dijakovic was holding the cell, and Alistair Black, again, is a good wrestler. I don't even have that many notes because I was just playing videos. One thing I will say, however, that black mask came out of nowhere, ended the match pretty quick. And it's kind of bad that I can tell when the match is going to end because of the time, time or setup. So, it was good. I mean, again, if you don't know inside things about wrestling, you would never know. It would just, you know, well, that came out of nowhere. But this was a really good, fun cheeseburger match. And they used it to close the show. But wait, we're not done yet. Well, I'll, I'll get to that. The real thing, the whole go away, this was a good show. For the most part, they really had B-level talent, with the exception of a few people and, and one, maybe two matches. It was all the B-squad, but they did really good. I mean, if they keep this up, they're going to have stars of the future forever. They don't have to per they don't have to poach indie talent to get the stars in. It was a good card, the one amazing match, but everything was really good. It flowed, it made sense. It was good timing. I think only the only turn the Velveteen Dream match. The, the, the crowd chant this is boring. They might have chanted that I think during the woman's six men's the the, the six woman match, but and you kind of get conditioned as a fan to kind of do that. So it's hard to say that's good or bad. And then there was a very special treat ending. Alistair Black made his goodbye speech. Exactly one week ago, I, uh, I sat on my couch and I'm 
of a sudden I get a phone call. And you guys obviously know what that phone call is about. What a crazy, crazy week this has been in my life. Definitely one of the greatest I've ever had. As I said, what a crazy week. There's always a few things that make me feel absolutely great. Number one, obviously, being a sports fan and a professional wrestler. But number two is coming home right here to NXT. This is a family right here. Yeah! And believe me, I am I'm so, so glad I get to be a part of this family. Because this family, no matter where I go after this, will always be my home. It truly is. Without you guys, I wouldn't have been here. So this, all of this, the call from, from, from this match, the first match I've had, and NXT is all to you. And this was kind of touching. And again, thank you, Alistair Black, Tomian. You were you were truly amazing in NXT. You, Alistair Black, were the reason why people like me would show up to NXT matches, pay our hard-earned money because we wanted to see you wrestle because you could put on a good match in your sleep. You could have red-eye flights all over, wrestle some guy from Ring of Honor, and still put on a really good match. So, no, 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 no. Alistair Blank, do not thank us. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. The one thing I will say about the Alistair Black, and I might say this and edit it to a degree and put it on the Friendoverse, because I haven't gotten to the true end yet, is that I really do feel special. And I know it's so overused, but I do feel blessed. I got to watch Alistair's Black, Alistair's Black first NXT man two plus years ago when I found out that NXT was coming to Daytona Beach. In the main event, it was Alistair Black versus Eric Young. Of sanity. Thank you. I feel special and privileged to see your first, or at least one of one of your first. No, it was his first. I think like the week before he debuted in the. He had a exhibition match in NXT UK. So as far as I know. And I could be way off base. I got a chance to see Aleister Black's first match in NXT. And I know there's weird taping stuff. And I don't know if he's going to do any more house shows. But if not, I got to see his last match in NXT. And to that, no, 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 no. You don't thank us, Aleister Black. I thank you. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And to you, Alistair Black, I wish every happiness and congratulations to moving up to the main roster. Main roster. May you and your wife enjoy all the joys of WWE with none of the garbage that comes with it. That's what I'll say. Oh, and I saw a guy in a, in a Steven Larson shirt. It was the going in raw. 
zombie shirt. And he just like, yeah, who are you, nerd? I'm like, dude, just smile. Let me take a picture. But that was NXT at Daytona Beach. A really good show. Very hard to complain, <laughs> complain about anything, though. Again, you can always feel free to, to complain, comment, write something down, and subscribe here on the Hobo and Girlfriend channel. I'm still working on the girlfriend part. Any of you Daytona ladies, hey, you like pro wrestling? I'm the man! Or I'm the hobo, at least. A couple of programming notes. Um, on Monday, I'm going to have two shows. Monday's a very special day for me. So it's Hobo's birthday. To celebrate, I am having the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League All Hobo Creation Match. Or All Hobo Creation Card in my, at the one and only Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling Ring. Located on the beach, made out of beach garbage, with police escort to make sure that no one does anything terrible there. And then it'll be the typical Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown. And that's really it for the week. So it's going to be a lot of wrestling, because I'll probably get this up Sunday. Let's see, it's 11. So Sunday's not too far away, folks. I would like to, th again, thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe.